Hey, today we're going to learn how to send an SMS or email or any other type of notification from Lovable. So let's get started. I'm on lovable.dev. It's funny that you should know that I haven't used Lovable very extensively. So this would be a very beginner friendly tutorial. For the project I have in mind, we're going to do a contact form. So let's go ahead and create our own contact form. Let's start with number first and do the SMS and then we can add the email later on. So name, number, and message. All right, here's our AI generated contact form. It is beautiful. Thank you, our AI overlords. So let's go ahead and test it out. Oh, nice. I'm just gonna go with a fake number test. Let's just see what happens. All right, so we're gonna ask Lovable to put the information of this contact form into a Superbase um, database. So let's go ahead and connect our Superbase. It's ready now, we can connect. So press that. I had to refresh this page to see this connect, so maybe that's what you have to do too if you don't, if you see this grayed out. Perfect. Let's store our contact form in a table. All right, it looks good. Essentially, what this is doing is creating a table in Superbase. If you don't know what a table is, it's like, let's say, a spreadsheet where you can fill in information. That's pretty cool. We're okay with that. That's all ready. Let's see if this works. Test, number, test, test. Send message. I'll go to our Superbase project, to the database, and I have this database. And let's see. There you go. We have a row added right there. And here's the row. We can see that it's correctly inputted. Now that this form works, the next step is let's send a test SMS to ourselves when this form is filled out so that we know oh, somebody on our website is trying to reach us. In order to send SMS or email, a misconception people have is that you can just, if you have a computer, you can do it. The reality is that you need a third party to send SMS and email. And usually third parties have very good free tiers. I'm the founder of Notification API and introducing you to the service that lets you send 100 SMS and 30,000 emails for free every month. You don't have to pay for anything. It all works out of the box. You don't have to configure anything. So let's go ahead and create an account here. This is the third party we're going to use for sending our SMS. Let's sign up. So this is what you see after you sign up. Business or project name, contact form. Are you a software developer? Yes. Implement your first notification, SMS. And this should give you this code right here. You're going to copy paste this, head over to our Lovable and tell Lovable that using this code in an edge function, send an SMS when this form is filled out. All right. Now, what does this code do? Essentially, it is connecting to this notification API service. And then it's requesting to send a welcome message to this number. And the SMS is going to say, hello world. I'm just going to change that to say someone filled out the contact form. So when someone fills this form, give us their number. We're going to, email, we're going to send the SMS to us at this other number. Okay. This is just a test number here that we're going to lose, which is okay. Let's go ahead, see what lovable comes up with. While we're waiting for this, I want to explain what edge functions are and why we're using them. If I were to tell lovable to use this code directly to send an SMS without mentioning this part, the edge function part, this code would run directly right here and it would send the SMS. It would work. But there's a problem, and this is very important to understand. From a technology perspective, 
anything happening in your front end, any code you put here is visible to everybody and everybody on the planet and it's modifiable by them. So what may end up happening is that a spammer may come to this form and they can use that and modify this code to send SMS all over the world. There are certain transactions, think sending SMS, sending emails, transferring money that should be protected, meaning that they should not be built into your form. Instead, they should be hidden away in a third-party service. In this case, Superbase Edge Functions. So what we're doing here is telling Lovable that when this form is filled out, call Superbase and then Superbase would run this code. So what happens is it's only Superbase that knows this username and password to connect to Notification API and not everybody else. And the only code that is run to send notification is this code. It's not going to be modified. The number is not going to be modified. So then you're protected from spammers misusing your service. We have our edge function here. Let's take a look at it just to see how that looks. Take a look at the code. Looks fantastic. Uh, let's go ahead and test this out. Test. Well, whatever phone number the user has. I am very excited to see this. Message sent successfully. If we go to our edge function logs, we see that this function is running and listening. And if we run this, the function runs, connects to notification API, sends the notification, and now we see something different in notification API. We don't, we no longer see the onboarding step because that is done. So our message has been sent and it's the welcome message. And if in notification API, you go to the logs, you can see that this notification, this SMS was sent and it was failed. The reason it was failed is that it's not a real number. And you can look at it and see that what it had sent. So it had sent this text, new contact form submission, test, the user's phone number, the client's phone number, and this. So here you have a very secure SMS sending functionality when a form is filled out. Now, a question you might be having at this step is, can I make this contact form send the SMS to the phone number that's being filled and thank the user for their input? Absolutely. You can do that in the code here by replacing this number with this phone number, but we're not gonna do that in code, we're using Lovable. So modify the sending functionality to send a thank you message to the, to the user, to the end user, just to clarify. Also, we don't want it to say welcome anymore. Maybe we want to call it thank you right now. This notification type, that's how we refer to it. This notification type should be called thank you. And it should be without spaces. While we're waiting for that, let me tell you another really important point about security and preventing spammers from screwing everybody over. Let's imagine that you respond to this phone number and you say, instead of saying, thank you, you say, thank you for filling this out. Here's the content of your form. Here's your message that you sent to us. What's the issue there? The spammer can put in someone else's phone number here. And instead of the message, they could put something like, hey, your crypto wallet is empty. Give us your coins and whatever. You're allowing a spammer to send any message to anybody in the world. That's what you have to be careful about. When you're implementing emails or SMS, you either want to have full control over who it's going to, for example, it's going to me all the time, nobody else, or you want to have full control over what it's going to say. If you're going to send it to a lot of people, if you're going to allow the user to, to put whatever phone number in as the receiver of an SMS, or an email, you want to make sure they receive a static message, not a message that can include any kind of text because 
that comes back to you if somebody misuses that for. Our edge function is deployed. Let's test it out. 0005. And the message is going to say whatever message. All right. Let's go to our logs, refresh the page. And there we have it. The thank you message has been sent. If we go to our notification API dashboard, by the way, we have a new thank you message type. And the cool thing about notification API is that you can see these messages going out, their category, and which one's working well, which one's not working well, look at their insights and so on. And maybe by the way, you want to ensure that this, the SMS doesn't go out in the future. You can actually come here and turn off the SMS. But looking at the logs, I can see that this message was sent out to the test number. It was delivered. And what the message would have said, if we put in a real phone number, it would have, that phone would have received, thank you test for contacting us. We received your message and we'll get back to you shortly. Do you notice the security flaw here? Thank you, test. So what Lovable did is taking the user's name and putting in the message. That is a little security flaw because what if the person uses a scam message here instead of their name? So for example, they could go, thank you for giving us your bank account password. If you don't want us to have your password, please send it to us again. So we disable this feature and then someone else's phone number. And what happens is that someone else will receive thank you, but instead of the name, it will say, thank you for giving us your bank account information. You see how easy it is for spammers to misuse your service. So what we need to do is make the SMS message the static. Do not use any of the form field in the content of the message. I was serious when I told you I have an extensively used lovable, but that's okay. We're going to upgrade. I love lovable and done upgraded. Heading back to our project here. Okay. Oh, I love it that my message is still there. It's not gone. I hate it when you go to a software and they ask you to log in or sign up or pay or whatever, and then redirect you and you lose all your progress to that point. The SMS message now uses a static, static text instead of including form field values. Perfect. And we can look at the code here. And this is the message now. New contact form submission received. Please check your dashboard for details. Perfect. All right. So just to explain everything from end to end, there's a form. User fills the form. Lovable has coded something into the form that the form would contact Superbase and Superbase receiving this request would put the form into a database and would also invoke an edge function. What is the edge function? It's just a bunch of code. It's this code you see here. What this code does is using notification API to send an SMS. Regarding the security, you either want to limit who your message goes to, like one person or a team, your internal team, for example, or you want to control what the content says. If you allow anybody to send anything to anybody else, it'll be used for a spam. Now that we have this, let's add email. Now also add email to the form, address to the form, and send a thank you email to the user. How do we send a thank you email to the user using notification API? Lovable can probably figure it out, but just to be sure, you can go to your thank message here and copy the email portion and give, you can copy this code and I'm sure Lovable can figure it out. Here's how to use notification API, send an email. I'm sure Lovable can figure out that's, that includes everything like SMS, email, in-app, mobile, whatever, but I'm sure Lovable can figure out how to use that. 
and just use the email portion of it because we don't want to send any of the other notifications right now. While we're waiting for this to happen, I just want to show you a few other cool features in a notification API. Now there's two ways to design an email. Either Lovable can code it for you, completely code it using HTML and CSS, or you can come to notification API and design it in this template section by following the onboarding. If you decide to use our template editor to design the email, your code would slightly change. So you have to give the new code to, to Lovable and ask Lovable to update the email sending code. The other thing you may be interested in is our in-app notifications, which is sort of this bell icon that can show in your, inside your web app to show in-app notification. We're also putting a lot of work in our insights section to show you what's going out, what's not going out. You see that I have errors here. It was because we use those fake numbers, 006. Those numbers never work. And the log section is probably something you'll work with a lot. You can see up to 30 days, you can see everything you've sent. And again, it's free for a hundred SMS and it's free for 30,000 emails a month, which is pretty extensive. Let's check back on our lovable. Perfect. It's telling us that, Hey, I want to modify this table. Email could be there too. And we're like, yeah, that makes sense. We want email to be there. There we have our email input in the contact form. Sometimes it takes so long. I want to like exercise. So I'm going to do squats. Every time lovable takes long, just do 10 squats. You'll be jacked. All right. There it is. Let's test it out. Test. I'm going to give my real email address. This is my email at notification API, by the way, feel free to reach out. Test. Doesn't matter. Send message. I'm going to open my email to see if it's there. Thank you for contacting us. Sahan at notification API. We have received your message and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Now let's take a look at the code to see what's happening here. So it is still sending an SMS to the admin. Every time the form is clicked, it's saying that new contact form submission received, please check your dashboard. It's also sending an SMS to the end user saying, thank you for contacting us of the type. Thank you. It's also sending an email of the type. Thank you email. And by the way, you can merge these two together. It's all going to the same person. Both are a thank you. So you could really remove this part and, or ask lovable that both of these types are thank you. Don't change the name of those because when you do that, if you separate them, now you have a thank you and then you have a thank you email, but they're really the same thing. So I'm going to ask actually lovable merge the thank you and thank you email send requests into the same request. Perfect. It's done. Now, just to recap two important points. One, there are certain transactions or certain things that your system must do that are sensitive. For example, if you were to send money to somebody, and in this case, sending emails and SMS is a sensitive transaction because it can be misused by spammers. Sensitive transactions must be performed by a backend like Superbase edge function. So when you need to do something like that, you can simply instruct lovable to use Superbase edge function to do that. The second thing that's important is that when you're allowing your users to do something that generates an email or an SMS, you want to either have full control over who it's going to or full control over the content. If you want somebody to send anything to anybody in the world, you need to ask your user to sign up and then you can put a limit on their account. For example, this user can only send this thing to somebody else, let's say five times a day, and then the spammers cannot use this effectively. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to answer. And check out Notification API. I think what we have beats any other solution for sending email and SMS.